Hey guys, this is Jesse with AverageJesse.com. I'm here with uh, something a little different today. Um, I have a massive issue in my house with water hammer when my irrigation valves cycle. Uh, it is so loud it'll wake you up if you're kind of in that in-between state between uh, fully asleep and awake. Um, this thing kicks like a mule and I know it can't be good for um, my pipes. I looked online and I did not find a very good uh, video on how to fix that. Um, specifically fix that here with irrigation. Um, so I'm gonna make a video about it. Uh, for those that don't know what Water Hammer is, uh, Practical Engineering YouTube channel did a phenomenal video on it. I'll link that in the description and, and he explains it way better than I could. So um, I've got a pressure gauge here. I'm going to cycle the um, irrigation in my backyard and we'll figure out exactly how bad the hammer is so we know how much uh, correction was achieved with these measures that I'm gonna put in today. So um, I'll go ahead and cycle those right now. Um, one thing to note is I did put in a pressure regulator uh, about a year ago and that helped for the little water hammers like from the washing machine and from the uh, toilet anything with like a quick valve that closes really quickly uh, can cause water hammer and that that helped for in the house but it didn't really do anything for the irrigation uh, so I picked up a water hammer arrester and you can install this in any direction. So anywhere here, I could install it if I wanted to put a T in the copper uh, and solder it in. Um, but the instructions say to put it as close to the valve as possible. So we've got to go find a better location over by where the valves are uh, and figure out a way to get this installed. So my valves are right here next to the door to the garage, kind of next to the gate. And the water main is about five, maybe six feet in that direction. Um, if I come out here to my backyard, I don't really want to put anything over here because there's no room um, and I don't want to run into it when I come out. So what I think I'm going to do is dig here, um, hope that there's some PVC here, put a T, make a standoff, come up a few feet and then put the arrestor right on top of that. So I'm going to pull back some of these rocks and see how much uh, PVC is here and how accessible it is. Oh, that's going to be a no go. As you can see, the footer for this wall extends most of the gap here that I would need to cut in for the PVC. Uh, so that's not gonna work. On this side, where I, my valves are, as you can see where the main is coming into the valve box, there's not enough room to dig and put the standoff here. Uh, I might be able to do something where I put in a T and another T and that's just a whole lot of mess. So what I think I'm gonna do, is try and figure out something in this area where it's as close as I can get to those valves uh, in between there and where my main is. So I'm gonna pull back some rocks and see if there's a better option over here. So after a ton of digging, there is no good place to put this arrester that's anywhere near the valve. The pipe comes out from where my house is, through the middle of this gate, it has an abrupt 90 right before it hits the valve box, and anywhere along that path is gonna be in the way. So we're going to install this right next to the water main and see if that works. This video might be called How Not to Prevent Water Hammer if this doesn't work. We'll see. Okay, so here's the plan. I'm going to cut into this main line that feeds that box. I have a quick repair T with the sliding couplers from Drip Depot. Uh, that's gonna make this a lot easier. I'll leave a link for that in the description below, uh, but that will keep me from having to bend the coupler or the T onto the existing line. So I'm really excited about this. Uh, then I'll have a piece of PVC acting as the standoff. That's gonna go in here. And then another adapter with a threaded fitting, so that way I'll have my arrester on top of that. So if all goes well, this is what this is going to end up looking like when I'm done. So I'm going to go ahead and shut the water off, make the cuts, and uh, glue this into place.
So it's been 24 hours, the glue is dry. I turned on the water to pressure test my fittings and it looks like when I cut that main line to fit the slip fitting in, I cracked the 20 year old PVC and a bunch of water came pouring out. Uh, I didn't have another one of those tees, but I did have some spare parts around. So I did another glue up, I'll show you that and we will uh, pressure test that to see if it's going to hold. It's kind of a bummer, I really wanted to showcase that piece. That that piece didn't fail, uh, my old PVC failed, uh, but we can still fix this water hammer with that arrester and we're gonna keep on moving forward with the parts that we have. So the new setup isn't crazy different. I've just got a standard T here and then this is a slip fitting, but this is a slip coupler and not a slip T. So here's the main line and then here's this screw fitting that's cemented in on one side um, and then this end extends out to fill the gap. So it's another slick uh, adapter. I really liked using this one, um, but then I've got my T coming up and then my arrester is up here. So same design, just a little bit different uh, way to go about it. So my plan here is to open up the water valve just to get it to the top of that T and then wait overnight and see if it has any leaks. So just open this a little bit. And give that a second to fill up. Okay, it's the next morning and I don't see any leaks uh, down in the hole. So we're gonna actually get our arrestor prepped. I'm gonna be using a bit of Teflon tape uh, to seal these threads before I put it down and do the threaded bushing. So give me just a minute here. Okay, now I'm gonna turn on the water again and check for any new leaks coming out of here. And it looks good. Uh, the water that's leaking is just from this backflow preventer and that was expected, uh, but nothing from here. So I'm gonna leave this for another uh, hour or so and just come back out and verify that there's no new leaks and uh, if that's good then we'll go ahead and run the system okay moment of truth Well, I would absolutely call that a success. Um, the hammer is still there, but way less than it was. Uh, you can't hear it from inside of the house unless you're really paying attention and listening for it. Um, and the gauge definitely showed an improvement. So um, all in all, I really think this was a great idea. I wish I would have installed it several years ago. Um, the last piece that I'm gonna do is I've got some of this um, pipe wrap that I'm gonna put uh, on the standoff and it's not really to protect it from freezing. We don't get freezing here in Phoenix, but the sun will just absolutely destroy uh, any of the PVC that's exposed. So this is just to prevent some of that uh, dry rot. Um, so thanks for watching. I'm really excited that this uh, project worked um, and I hope this helps somebody else. So uh, if you have any other thoughts or ideas on how to prevent water hammer, uh, definitely leave them down in the comments. I would love to read them. Um, but this so far of all the things I've tried has been the only thing that's been successful. So uh, once again, this is Jesse with AverageJesse.com and thanks for watching. So one more pro tip, when you're filling the hole that you uh, dug to put in the new irrigation line, uh, I have a one inch hardware cloth that I uh, screwed into an old picture frame. I'm gonna pour the dirt back through this to have the um, larger rocks um, captured and the sand to fall through. And the reason being is those rocks, when they're leaning up against either PVC or your drip irrigation line, 
Um, every time water runs through there or you walk over the top or drag your garbage cans to the side of the road, um, it puts pressure uh, on one of the jagged ed edges of the rocks and it could puncture that. So um, I'm going to fill up that top layer up to the top of the PVC with that fine sand and then I'll put the rest of the big rocks uh, back on top. So this has been really handy and it's super cheap and easy um, whenever you're needing to fill up holes.